Hey guys, in this session, we're going to be looking at uh, factorizing quadratics where the a value is not equal to 1. Um, so what I mean by that a value not equal to 1 is the coefficient of x squared right there is not equal to 1. All right. So normally when you factorize quadratics, you've always worked with x squared coefficient is always equal to 1. But anyway, we're going to just show you the long way of how to do this um, without a graphics calculator. And I am going to show you guys a little hack with the graphics calculator towards the end as well. So yeah, so let's get started. So um, now the way we kind of factorize uh, with uh, question A is what, there's a couple of algorithms, I mean, a couple of steps that you got to do. And, um, you know, I'll maybe if I get some time later on, I'll explain to you why it works the way it does. But what you normally do is normally you look for two numbers that multiply to this negative four and then add up to negative seven. All right. But instead of um, instead of that, there's going to be a slight little extension to it. All right. So what we have to do is we actually we actually have to do two times negative four first. So when we do this two times negative four, we actually end up with negative eight. So now we're looking for two numbers that's going to multiply to negative eight and add up to the negative seven. So really what we've kind of changed around is that we're looking for two numbers that multiply to the negative eight, which is from negative four multiplied by 2 and we're also looking for two numbers that add up to negative 7 which ends up being here so our two numbers are going to be negative 8 and positive 1 so I'm going to type in uh, sorry write in negative 8 and positive 1 and once we've done this we're going to split that negative 7x uh, with these two uh, negative 8 and positive 1 so let me show you what I, what happens now so we're going to write down 2x squared but instead of writing it as minus 7x, we are going to write it as minus 8x plus 1x, uh, and then we've got minus 4 at the end. So what we've really done is we have replaced that negative 7x with the negative 8 and positive 1 uh, from here. All right. Now, once we do that, the next part is we split them up into two parts and we're going to factorize the left hand side and then we're going to factorize the right hand side. So if you look at the left hand side, what we have is we've got 2x as a common factor. So we can take it out and we've got x minus 4 inside the brackets. Now, on the right hand side, it's really important that you actually take at least one out. Uh, like you've got to take a factor out, even if it's just one. Otherwise, this, this thing won't actually end up working. So in this case, we've got 1x and minus 4. We don't really have any common factors apart from one thing, and that's just the number 1. So we're going to take plus 1, and in the bracket, we're going to put in x minus 4, because we know that 1 times x is 1x, and 1 times negative 4 is negative 4. So that's fine. Now the next part is that we actually have a common factor of x minus 4. So what we can do is we can take out x minus 4 as a common factor, and when we do that, we have x minus 4 in a bracket multiplied. Now what you'll have left over is the 2x plus 1. So the 2x, which is from here, and the plus 1, which is from here, comes along. And then that is how you end up factorizing this particular quadratic. OK, so let's have a look at B. So when we look at B, um, before we start, we can see that we can actually make this problem a little bit simpler by actually taking out uh, some common factors but you know what just for this uh, exp this video I'm just gonna kind of go through with it anyway so the first step being is that 8 times negative 8 uh, that's gonna give me what have we got that's gonna give me negative 64 and I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add up to negative 12 so in other words I've got this negative 64 from negative 8 multiplied by positive 8 and I also have the negative 12, which is actually the coefficient of x. So what I'm looking for is two numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add up to negative 12. Now, after fishing around a bit, it is negative 16 times positive 4. And we're going to do negative 16 times positive 4. So we're going to rewrite this quadratic now. Uh, but instead of that negative 12x, we're going to replace it with negative 16 and 4. So we still have 8x squared. But instead of that negative 12x, we're going to write it as minus 16x plus 4x and minus 8. So once again, I got the negative 16 and the plus 4 from these um, this little calculation here. Once I do that, I have to split the split it up in the middle. 
and I'm going to factorize the left hand side. When I factorize the left hand side, I've got 8x as a common factor, so I can take it out and I'm going to end up with x minus 2. And if you have a look at the right hand side, I can see that 4 is a common factor, so I'm going to take out plus 4, which means I'm going to get x minus 2 as a common factor. And at this point, what I can see is that x minus 2 is a common factor. All right, so I can take out x minus 2, and when I take out x minus 2, I look at what's left over, and that's 8x plus 4. So the 8x actually comes from there to here, and the plus 4 comes from there to here. And this is how I factorize it. Cool. So to show you guys how to do this in the graphics calculator, remember that the graphics calculator actually gives you the um, solution. So what you can do is, with the solution, you can actually work backwards. So what I mean by that is that, uh, let's see if I can get the graphics calculator here. So I'm going to go into menu and go down to equation. Once I go down to equation, I'm going to go into polynomial. Uh, by the way, guys, there is a video on uh, the graphics calculator tips in my playlist. If you have a look on how to solve a quadratic in a graphics calculator. So it th this full explanation in there. So I'm just kind of going to going to go through it quickly here. So degree is two because that's the coefficient of x squared, and you got the value of a, b, and c. Now a is the um, coefficient of x squared. So if you look at the first problem, my coefficient of x squared is two, and then b is the number in front of x. So that's going to be minus seven, and finally c is the number by itself, which I'm going to put it as negative four. And watch what happens when I solve it. Right? When I solve it, I'm actually getting two answers here. So my first answer is four, and my second answer is negative half. So just to kind of show you guys, working that backwards when you have a solution is this. So when you have that solution of x is equal to four, and then x is equal to minus half, uh, remember that going backwards to what the factor was, because if it equals to zero, we just need to rearrange this. All right, in other words, we can rewrite this one here as x minus four is equal to zero. And as for the right-hand side, you can see that you can go 2x, two times x equals minus one, and then rearrange that minus one to the left-hand side to get 2x plus one equals to zero. And right now, what you should see is that you've actually got one, one of the factors, which is the 2x plus one right there, and then you've got the other factor, which is x minus four, which is there. Um, and I know people have asked me, oh, can I actually do this in the exam? Well, you're allowed to use a graphics calculator, so use it as a tool. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, one more thing is this, when you have a look at uh, question B though, it's going to look slightly different. And that's why I've actually picked this particular question with um, question B, just so I can show you guys. So with question B, what happens is that you got to do a little bit of extra step there, but it still does work. All right, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to put in my value of x squared, uh, coefficient of x squared, which is 8. Then my coefficient of x is negative 12. So I'm, I'm looking at question B here, guys. And then the value by itself, the constant, is minus 8, right at the end there. Now, when I do this, and if I solve it, I'm actually getting two answers here again. Okay, I've got x equals to 2 and x equals to negative half. So I'm going to start writing that down, right? So I've got x equals to 2 and x equals negative half. Now, what happens is if I follow the same procedure as I did in part A, then I can rewrite this as x minus 2 equals to 0. And then on the right-hand side, I've got this other uh, 2x, so 2 times x equals minus 1. And then rearranging it, I get 2x plus 1 equals to 0, which means my quadratic could actually end up looking like this. So we've got x minus 2 times 2x plus 1. But here's the problem. The problem, though, is if you look at right at the um, coefficient of coefficient of this particular quadratic here we've got 8x squared and looking at this quadratic right now if you look at it you've got x times 2 it's only 2x uh, x times 2x is only 2x squared so you're actually missing an entire 4 there so what you could do is this you could have actually just um, right at the end just multiply by another 4 because think about it um, if I actually expand this bracket out, I'm going to end up with 8x plus 4, which is still going to give me an answer of negative half. Or the other option is I could have actually put the 4 in front of x minus 2 
And if I expand that, I'm going to end up with 4x minus 8 and 2x plus 1. It is just another way of writing this quadratic. Okay, now I know I went way past time with this one, but um, you know, like like I said, if you if you don't want to use the graphics calculator with this, that's absolutely fine. But it's just sometimes uh, good to know these little shortcuts just to uh, manage your time better during your exams. All right, guys, that's basically it for this really quite long video compared to my normal ones. But um, as always, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to keep up with the latest content. There should be some playlists popping up. Uh, check them out. Some good revision material there. And as always, thank you for watching.